Greetings, Science Maximites. Welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. My name is Phil, and today on Science Max, we're going to be harnessing the awesome power of lightning! <laughs> How are we harnessing the power of lightning, you ask? With this balloon. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Phil, what's similar between a balloon and lightning? Well, nothing right now. But behold, as I use the power of static electricity and rub the balloon on my head. Because basically, that's how it starts. You see, when I rub this balloon on my head, it's stealing electrons from me, creating a positive charge in my hair and a negative charge in the balloon. And the interesting thing is, you know that things with opposite charges attract each other, right? Something that has a positive charge will attract negative things and vice versa. But anything with a charge will attract anything with a neutral charge. See all these things on the table? They all have a neutral charge, which means they've got equal amounts of positive and negative. Right now, this balloon is building up a big negative charge, which means it will be attracted to all of these things. This can of Science Max Soda, it has a neutral charge. The balloon has a negative charge, which means the can will be attracted to the balloon. And this paper is neutrally charged, which means the paper will be attracted to the balloon. And if you hold the negatively charged balloon next to neutrally charged sugar, ha ha, sugar storm. And you probably, wait, I don't want to get sugar in my hair. And you probably know this trick. If you rub a balloon on your head, you can stick it on the wall. Ha <laughs> ha! But what does any of this have to do with lightning? Well, the same thing is going on with a lightning bolt. The clouds become negatively charged, and that negative charge wants to equalize itself with the ground, which is neutrally charged. And that lightning bolt is the electricity jumping from one place to another. And you can see this yourself if you rub a balloon on your head and you put it next to something metal like a doorknob. There'll be a spark. But here's another thing you can do if you don't have a balloon. Which I guess I don't anymore. Rub your feet, if you're wearing socks, on a carpet and then turn out all the lights and touch a doorknob you might be able to see a spark jump from your finger to the door. That's lightning in a very, very small form. So that's what we want to do today on Science Max Experiments at Large. Max out lightning! I think I'm going to go to the Ontario Science Center and ask Heather her advice. She really knows her stuff. I'm going to go see if she's busy right now. Come on. So here's how static electricity works. Normally, everything has equal numbers of positive and negative charges. That's when things are said to have a neutral charge. But when you rub a balloon on your head, the balloon develops more negative charge than positive because it pulls electrons from your hair. The same thing happens in clouds during a storm. The cloud develops a negative charge when water molecules start bumping into each other. A lightning bolt happens when the negative charge in the cloud gets so big, the attraction to the positive charge in the ground gets strong enough that the electrons can make the jump all the way from the cloud to the ground, and you get lightning. Well, you just... got the portal fixed, so... That... Well, it's not exactly fixed. It's. Still got a couple bugs that I'm ironing out, but I stopped coming in 10 feet above the floor. Hey. So that's a, a step in the right direction. Anyway, Heather, <laughs> I've come here because I want to ask your advice on something. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So what I am doing is creating lightning. So this is where I'm at right now. So this is a balloon. I blow up the balloon, and then I rub it on my head, and it creates a static charge, right? right? Yeah. Just like in the lightning bolt between the clouds and the ground. And the ground. So I was wondering if I was wondering if you could help me maybe max that out and I thought the perfect place to start would be a larger balloon. Ooh, right on. Actually, yeah, I like this. Yeah. Um, I've got a big balloon if you just give me a second. Sure. All right. Catch. Okay. 
All right, giant balloon. So what I figured is I'll just start rubbing it on my head. Okay. And then we could maybe stick it to the wall or something? Yeah, I think instead of a wall, we can even try on this, this whiteboard here. Oh, okay, great. Keep rubbing. I'm, I'm right. rubbing. Okay, right, ready? Yeah. Here we go. Try. And... So that, um, that didn't, didn't exactly right. work. Yeah. Both of us rubbing our heads on the balloon. Okay. And go. Wow. That was a whole lot of nothing. Well, we've got a really heavy balloon here. And so. I feel like our heads are only this big, so we can't cover as much surface area of the balloon. Fortunately, you can also build up a static charge by rubbing a balloon on a sweater. Or if your balloon is giant, rubbing sweaters on your balloon. Yeah. But even that didn't work so well. I think what we need to do is come up with a better way to create a difference of charge. Yeah, yeah, let's forget about the balloon. You have something else? I have something else. Really awesome here at the Science Center. You wanna check it out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, all right. Should we take the sweater and the balloons, or um, should we leave them here? We'll leave them here. Okay. Yeah. So, you would like to move electricity from here to there. Well, what you need, my friend, is a conductor. All right, a little more arpeggio this time. No, not that kind of conductor. All aboard! No, not that kind of conductor either. This kind of conductor. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, that's just a piece of metal. Well, that's right. That's because you're smart. This is a circuit. Electricity flows from this battery along the wires and into the light bulb. But Sal, you cleverly observe, the light bulb is not lit. This is true. That is because we have a gap in the circuit. And air is not a good conductor of electricity. Is metal a good conductor of electricity? Let us find out. <laughs> metal is a good conductor of electricity. What about wood? Nope. What about this horseshoe? Is a good conductor. Will this sandwich conduct electricity? Nope. No. What about this plastic fish? Nope. What about this pickle? No. Pickle is not a good conductor. That's why we make electrical wires out of copper and not pickles. <laughs> you know, in case you were wondering. By now you're probably an expert on what happens when you rub a balloon on your head, right? The balloon becomes negatively charged, which means it will attract anything of an opposite charge or anything positive, or anything that is neutrally charged, like, um, well, like me. Look at the hairs on my arm when I bring the balloon close. Whoa! You see, the neutral charge in my body is being attracted to the negative charge in the balloon. So if something is negatively charged, what happens if you bring something else negatively charged nearby? Well, they'll repel each other. And here's an experiment you can do to make something fly using static electricity. You'll need a balloon, a sweater, scissors, and a plastic bag out of the thinnest plastic you can find. Fold the bag up and cut off the bottom. You don't want that part. Then cut another strip from the bag. This will give you a hoop of plastic. I find it works better if you break it and tie it again. Lie it flat and rub it with the sweater. This will give it a negative charge. You'll know you've got enough of a charge when it really wants to stick to the table. Then take your balloon and rub the sweater on the balloon to charge it up. Because both the balloon and the hoop have negative charges, they repel each other. Then put them together and it will repel. And you can get the hoop to levitate. Ha ha, a floating bag whoa, of static charge. But here's the thing, you need to keep it away from your body. Because if you get close, the bag will stick to you because you're neutrally charged and the bag is negatively charged. Pretty cool, right? Well, let's max it out. <laughs> Maxed out floating static ring. <laughs> Whoa, no. uh, yeah! 
Look out, look out, oh no! Oh, sorry about that. Uh, oh well. It was, it was fun while it lasted. Uh, I gotta charge these up again. Being a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Buster Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. My name is Buster Beaker, and welcome to Cooking with Science. Let's say, for example, I've spilled the salt. Oh, no. Look at me. I've spilled the salt. Oh, there's salt all over the place. Not really a big deal, right? All you have to do is clean up the salt, put it back in the container. But, oh no, I've also spilled pepper on the salt. But that's all right. You might be able to carefully separate the set. But no! Oh dear, look, the pepper and the salt are all mixed together. What do I do? Well, here's how you can save the day using the power of science. All you need is a cloth and a plastic spoon. Like, like this one here. Just rub the plastic spoon on a cloth and you'll be charging it up with a negative charge of static electricity. If it's got a negative charge, it will attract anything that has a neutral charge, just like the salt and pepper. But I know what you're thinking. How will we separate them? Well, here's the answer, my friends. Pepper is lighter than salt. Observe. Well, if you hold the spoon high enough, the pepper will be attracted and make the jump up to the bottom of the spoon, but not the salt, as long as you've got it high enough up. Because the salt is heavier, you'd have to bring the spoon closer, which we're not going to do. And if you tap it off to the side, you'll make a nice little pile of pepper, and there you go, separating pepper from salt using the power of science. Thanks for watching Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Beaker.